Hey everyone, James with TFB TV. Thanks for tuning in to TFB TV GunFest 2021. We're bringing you firearms and accessories from your favorite manufacturers and what they're releasing for 2021 because we're not really having that show this year, if you know what I'm saying. By the way, be sure to check out our side channel, TFB TV Showtime, which is all of our show coverage. We're gonna have a full GunFest 2021 playlist there, as well as the TFB TV main channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Today, I've got Luis, a good friend of mine from Holo Sun, and you guys kind of know James Reeves is a bit of a gun snob. When you think about Holo Sun, you think about at first, you know, you first see him, it's like, okay, yeah, these are inexpensive optics, you know, maybe I'm going to stay away. But you guys have relatively quickly developed a reputation for making a top quality product relatively inexpensively. And it's been, I, I, I've got to. I have to say congratulations. Appreciate because it. Because you guys have done a good job. So of course, now you're firing on all cylinders. You've got, what, five new releases for 2021? Yeah, we actually got a few slightly before 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll definitely be coming in now, especially with stuff coming in stock, mm -hmm. uh, just because of huge back orders and stuff. But um, yeah, we've, uh, we've been able to kind of expand on the uh, pistol lineups and made some upgrades late in 2020 uh, to bring into the new year. Yeah, and some of this looks familiar to me, some of it not as familiar. Why don't you walk us through left to right? So, um, you know, traditionally, the first thing that we started out with was the uh, 407 and 507 series. Um, so, you know, first and foremost, people that don't know, Hollow Sun, right now, we break everything into either 4 series or a 5 series. Uh, anything 4 series optic is basically a fixed reticle. Uh, the majority of those are a 2 MOA dot. Um, in the pistol side of the house, we wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, one of the requests that we had had is, hey, you know, we want something bigger than a 2 MOA dot, and we want something smaller than your 32 MOA ring system. So we wanted to do something out of the box, and one of the things that we had done was something called the CO. Uh, we took the large dot concept, but melded it into ours. We did an 8 MOA ring, so it's not a solid dot. And the uh, mentality behind that was, you have a, a, the equivalent of a large dot, so it's easier and quicker to find, but you don't have a solid, huge dot staring back at you. So one of the nice things with that system, and obviously, again, depends on one's eyesight, um, but you can see through, basically, that dot. So for some people that have eagle eyes, they can actually focus through the dot and basically what I call frame the pitch. They can have basically a, a zero MOA aiming point if they really want to go precise. Or, for example, in my case, um, you know, I can see a color shift. So one of the problems when you have with a large dot is when you put the further distance you push out, what you end up running is, is that you know you're on target because that dot is blocking that target. But where behind is it sitting? And obviously, the further and the smaller the target is, the more play you have. Mm -hmm. So now you can actually kind of see, and you know, like in my case, I can actually see a color transition. So if I'm shooting a, a let's say, a white paper with a small black bullseye I can see the black and where it is inside that small circle regardless this is a 507 C so this is our most popular system the 5 series is the multi reticle unit which is one of the big things that we're known for so 2 MOA dot 32 MOA ring and the system allows you to run it three different ways you can run it as a dot only you can run the ring by itself or you can run the combination of both um, and the biggest thing with us is no re-zeroing that was the big thing that we came out with uh, you know, back in 2015. We didn't invent multi-reticle systems, but we we're the first people to figure out how to do a multi-reticle that basically I'm taking an entire picture and I can shut on and off different parts of that picture. So since I have no moving parts to do that, my zero never changes. So the biggest thing now new, and not only on the 507, but some of the other products, um, what we did now is something we called the X2 variant. Um, so we had the original models that came out in 2017. Um, we built up on that, we made some changes for the early 2020, and then we came back around September or so of 2020, and then we made another final change. Um, the biggest change that we did is what we call the lock mode. Lock mode was something that I did um, for a really big major special response team. Mm -hmm. When they went to their um, red dot system, their biggest concern from a universal standpoint of everything that they tested was they were like, hey, we're concerned of putting an adjustable shooting solution on our pistols in holsters. I'm sitting down at the office, uh, I'm riding in the squad car, I'm slamming up against the Bearcat. 
is there a chance that in that small gap in that holster, can a button press be accidentally activated? You know where you set your system, you show up to a location, you pull your weapon, you're expecting to see one thing, you see something else, you might not see anything at all. So I did something back then called the lock mode. And what it allowed us to do is that once you put the, the uh, whatever feature set you want, let's say you're a dot and ring guy, you like setting seven. Um, and I always go to the whole romp appeal set it and forget it. I never need to touch it. You can basically put the lock mode on and what that does is that it'll disable the buttons. So now you try to change settings, the system will not react. It's basically a little bit of a safeguard. You have to repeat, it's a five second hold on the positive side. You have to go ahead and repeat that same feature again to be able to regain control of the unit. The biggest issue, uh, well not issue, but the drawback at the time that we had was that in order for me to add that feature, I had to remove a feature. Um, so we had a bit of a tailored product more to the professional market, I would say. And then obviously all the features that everybody knew us for on the commercial side. Um, the biggest thing is I would have to make two different separate runs. So the biggest thing that we were able to do middle end of 2020 was we were able to how to incorporate that lock mode going forward without removing any of the existing features. And that was the big thing. Okay. Let's move one more down the line. We've got the 507 DX2 variant. Correct. And then now we're looking now at... Now we're going to 508. Okay. Um, so the biggest thing as far as 508, the main difference is obviously on the uh, housing material. 507 is a 7075 aluminum system. On the 508, now you jump into grade five titanium. Um, but obviously, as you can see as well, the actual uh, shape of the unit has changed. Um, that was something that we did as well uh, last year. So the original design was the standard round top design. Uh, when we were working on this other project, which we'll get to in a little bit, um, we discovered that this square or flat top design was giving us much better test results on drop test protocol. So instead of having somebody pay extra money just for the titanium, since the 508 is our premium open style reflex system for a pistol, um, we wanted to go ahead and basically add the bonus and say, hey, you're not just paying because of material. So we now changed the uh, format to this square system. So you have much better drop test results, period, regardless compared to just from an industrial design. So you got the titanium and the industrial design giving you both added benefit. This is going to be a little bit more durable. It's going to be lightweight, going to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, so durable, yes. Titanium actually weighs more than aluminum. But uh, from grade five titanium from 7075, you're getting about 2.7 times more tensile strength. So the reason why titanium was originally associated with lighter is because you can machine it a lot thinner and still maintain the, the uh, strength of aluminum. We didn't want to do that. We don't shave anything off. So you're actually getting the full strength benefit that titanium gives you, uh, if you want to use the term pound for pound, mm -hmm. over the aluminum system. I see. And the 508 was introduced when? 508 was introduced um, in 2019, but it, it, the rollout was really slow. Um, then we did in 2020, the rollout happened almost nil. Um, and basically uh, 508Ts in the newer X2 variant with all the bells and whistles is actually starting to ship now. Okay, let's move one more. We've got one that looks very similar to the 508 right here. So then now we go into the 509. Um, so the 509 is our venture into the fully enclosed system. Um, the original concept, we actually showcased it at NRA in 2017. Um, a lot of people just really, really pay attention to it. We kind of sat back with it. Um, obviously, another company came out with the, uh, uh, you know, an enclosed system. There started, people started seeing the benefits and the traction. So we went ahead, came back, revisited the idea and then went ahead in early 2020, went ahead to, to officially announce it to kind of show off um, the 509T. Um, so again, this is a full uh, grade five titanium housing, so you're getting the same benefits of the 508, um, but the main difference is being fully enclosed. Um, the fully enclosed, there's really two primary reasons why you wanna consider going closed versus open. Um, for me, the second most important aspect of it is fog mitigation. So the systems are fully nitrogen filled, just like standard, uh, you know, any red dot or scope that you use. So it helps mitigate fogging problems. Any open system is like glasses when you come out of the car in the, in the summertime, um, out of the AC, you're more prone to fogging. 
Um, so that's one of the advantages. For me, the biggest advantage is the protection of the emitter. And when I say that, um, obviously, you know, the emitters are enclosed behind a protective, uh, like ours are, are enclosed behind a high impact glass. So we're not worried about damaging the physically, uh, physically the emitter. It's more of a protection of issue. So theoretically, um, if I'm in snow, if I'm in mud, if I do a lot of saltwater maritime operations and even probably freshwater maritime operations. Um, so the example, I chase somebody or I'm out in a muddy area. Technically speaking, I can get a drop of mud that falls right in front of here. This is a projector, just like your old school TV. So if you stand in front of the projector, you're blocking the video. Same thing here. If I get a drop of mud fall in here, I have the potential to block my red dot emission, hence I have no reticle. Um, I always tell people, if that happens to you, play the lotto, because I think that's an unrealistic situation. For me, the more realistic situation is I fell in the mud and I got a clunk of mud or, you know, my weapon slipped out of my hand for some reason. Again, it gets full of mud. Now my concern is, you know, again, in the pistol, in the pistol dots, we don't have a huge field of view, so to speak. So a decent chunk of mud in here, not only could it block uh, the, the emitter itself from showing, projecting my reticle, I might have enough blockage that I don't even see my iron sights as a backup. So if you've ever tried to stick your pinky finger and try to clean this out, it doesn't really work, let alone, let's say you're an officer and you're in the middle of a call, you do not have that luxury. But with a fully enclosed system, I can easily wipe that front, wipe that rear glass clean, keep on going, and I don't have to worry about anything blocking my emitter. One of the things that we found too, especially like in saltwater maritime operations, you get overspray. The water will evaporate, the salt crystals will stay behind. Mm -hmm. If you get enough accumulation of salt crystals, you can have the emitter distort and you get a funky reticle or you get nothing at all as well. So again, being fully enclosed, if you're dealing with those type of environments or that's a concern for you, this is the reason why we did this. When is the 509 being produced? Is it something, I know you said you've teased it for a while, but is it out yet? It is finally out and it is shipping. Again, slower than what we would like, but it is moving. Now we've got one that looks a little bit more familiar to me. We're new micro red dot optics. So the case series. So basically what we did is took all of this and basically shrank it. Um, you know, pistol, uh, what I call micro compact carry laser blazer optics ready guns have uh, caught up quite a bit. Um, so we wanted to try to bring the same capabilities in a smaller compact size. So that's where the K was born. Uh, the K comes in two configurations, 407K and the 507K. The 507K, same setup, 2MOA dot 32 MOA multi reticle system. The 407K is the first time we've ever done it. It is actually um, a 6 MOA solid dot. So it's something more traditional that a lot of the guys are used to. And from what we've seen, 6 MOA kind of seems to be the sweet spot. It's, it's small enough that you still have a precise shot and a lot of guys like it. It's not too big, but it's big enough at the same time that's pretty easy to find. 6 MOA dots pretty much dominate the competition area. And if there's somebody that needs to transition and find on target fastest those guys, they're using 6 MOA dots, so you know, we weren't gonna try to reinvent the wheel. That makes sense to me. And this is really geared towards, if we're being honest here, name drop some other brands. We've got uh, like the Glock, 43X and 48 MOS, even though, uh, yeah, this uses a shield RMSC mounting pattern, correct? So it's very close. Um, so th th that is the big thing um, that we had to change and, and there's a very big reason why we made the change. So the as far as uh, mounting it on a shield RMSC size cutout, the physical cutout is the same, the screw hole pattern is the same the what we call what we refer to the indexing of the recoil lugs is also the same but that's where it changes on the shield system they traditionally use two in the front two in the rear on our system we don't use the rears at all so we only use the front ones and our front ones are slightly shallower what i tried to do here was basically not to try to reinvent the wheel but we wanted to establish a universal footprint so what i mean by that is if I have a weapon that's traditionally cut properly for an RMSC, no, you cannot out of the box mount the K. 
But if the weapon is designed with our footprint, you can obviously mount ours. You can still mount the shield. You can mount the Romeo Zeros. You still have backwards compatibility. Now, the main reason why we, it's not that we didn't want to play nice. The biggest thing with our unit compared to everything else currently on the market, this is the only waterproof micro dot that we know of out on the market. Um, that's the big thing. When you look at Hollow Sun, every single thing that we make, there's certain parameters that we want to try to keep regardless of price point. Minimum recoil ratings, everything we make is night vision compatible, and everything is actually waterproof. Minimum IP67, meaning you can fully submerse it up to three feet for 30 minutes. This is the only micro dot that we know of right now that actually has that capability. So in order for me to meet that protocol, I had to play with the housing design, and that's why we had a slight modification on the footprint. Um, but again, we, we try to do the universal system, so if somebody follows our system or if you modified it to ours, you don't lose the backwards compatibility. Okay, and there are gonna be a lot of people who are gonna get all pissed off in the comments saying, oh, that sounds to me like a proprietary system, but what you're saying is that modification was necessary in order for you guys to maintain Correct. that level of Correct. waterproofing that you were looking for. Correct. Let's move over to, we've got what looks like a, a standard 507 to me. Here. Well, it looks standard, um, but the biggest thing obviously with this unit, this happens to be a GR or a green variant. Um, so, you know, one of the things obviously that we've been doing as well for a little bit is offering some reticle choices. Um, you know, red has always been the traditional system, uh, but green has gained a huge amount of popularity. Uh, we started introducing green optics back in 2017. Um, and right now, from a pistol standpoint, um, and in general, it's, it's catching a lot of uh, traction. Red is still king, um, but green is doing very well. Um, so hot right now. It is, definitely. And, you know, from a hollow sun standpoint, one of the things that we wanted to do with the green, we didn't want to just shove a green LED in there. We wanted to try to figure out, can we make the LED technology better? So what we were able to do is, from a battery life perspective, everything right here is running on uh, CR, uh, 1232, uh, 1632 batteries, excuse me. Um, so right now we're getting about 50,000 hours of continuous battery life setting, six of 12. If you're running the dot only, if you run the ring and dot reticle, you're looking at about uh, 20,000 hours, give or take. That doesn't include solar fail safes for the unit habit or the shake awake option as well. But if we take that battery life and we break it down, so if we take brightness levels and we break it down to what I call low, medium, and high, um, and we have a total of 12, two night vision and then 10 daylight, the low and medium settings, regardless of the color, battery consumption is around the same. But if you're one of those guys that continuously run your optic in high brightness settings and you happen to be a green guy instead of a red guy, you can get up to three times more better battery efficiency on the green system than the red. I would have never guessed that. Yes, and I'm obviously, my mind right now, and, and a lot of people usually associate it backwards, like yeah. back in the laser days that, oh, green is a power hog compared right. to red. This is basically a complete opposite. 507C, uh, well, again, so you have the four series. Mm -hmm. So in the four series, in the full size optic, uh, you're gonna have the two MOA dot version, and then you're gonna have the eight MOA, eight MOA ring version. Um, and those start at about 230 bucks for the dot and about two, 60-ish, 270-ish on the ADMORE ring system. Um, then when you go into the five series with the two MOA dot, 32 MOA uh, multi-reticle system, right now MAP is about 310 uh, if you're looking at red. Green from any product that we offer from in a green variant, you're looking at about a $30 difference uh, more to go for the green version than the red. Um, so about 310 on a 507C in red. Once you jump up to the 508T, you're looking at about $60 more. So it's about 270, 280 bucks map. Uh, I'm excuse me, 370, uh, 360, 370 map as far as on the 508T. When you go into the 509 being our flagship pistol optic, you're looking at about $430 map price. Um, and as far as on the Ks are concerned, the 407K is about $230, $240 map. And on the five series, it's about 280. Talk to me about my mounting options for 507, 508, 509. So 507s, so 407s, 507s, 508s, um, we actually share the same footprint as Trigicon RMR. So anywhere you can mount a Trigicon RMR, you can actually mount these units without any issue whatsoever. Um, 
the only difference per se is we use slightly shorter screws uh, because our screw system is inset a little bit more. Um, it's about two millimeters shorter, but other than that, everything is identical. Um, obviously the unique one is gonna be the 509 and obviously because it's fully enclosed, I don't have a way to, you know, I can't, if I put a hole in it to direct mount it, so to speak, I'm no longer fully enclosed. Sure. So that's the main difference. So the 509, it's, it's, it's basically a clamp design. It is proprietary. Um, but the cool thing about the 509 when we thought about this unit too is we, we wanted to think about, uh, back to that term of backwards compatibility. So if I actually take a 509, let's say the 508, you can actually see that the unit is actually shorter than a 507 or a 508. So what that means is that this fully enclosed system, not only is it compatible with, let's say, like a, a, an MOS that's a universal system that has a larger footprint, and you use the appropriate adapter plate, let's say you have a, a, an old school Glock and you cut the slide out. I actually can fit this in that cutout if it's been cut out for a Trigicon RMR footprint. Um, so in the box, the unit will come with a hollow sun slash RMR adapter plate for those instances. Um, otherwise, for example, let's say if you had an MOS gun, um, we've been working with some other manufacturers like C&H Weapons Precision um, that are making direct mount plates. Uh, because you could technically mount this without buying anything else on one of those systems, but you're going to end up stacking a plate on top of another plate. That's never a good idea, number yeah. one. And number two, obviously, it's going to make this look like a skyscraper. Yeah, for sure. So we always recommend getting a direct plate, and, and we've been lucky that we've gotten some good aftermarket support. So, you know, all of the popular stuff like the Glocks and the, and the SIGs and uh, Smiths and other stuff, you know, we've got people making direct uh, adapter plates for it. So it'll sit properly, sit at the right height, you can, this will still co-witness with standard suppressor height sites as well. Um, so you don't really have to do, it's not, it's not really proprietary per se. It's still easily compatible and configurable with the stuff that's out there. Well, Luis, it sounds like Holo Sun is on a Holo run. Can I say that? Can I say, was that, was that a good one? Luis, thanks a ton for bringing all of these new options that you guys are bringing to the market. As I said, I, I think 2021 is gonna be a big year for you guys because now you have earned this, this reputation that we alluded to at the beginning of the video where you're making a, a great product at a great price point, extremely competitive price point. So I hope you're proud of yourselves. Oh, we appreciate it. And we, you know, the main thing is, you know, we appreciate that everybody's, like I say, just giving us a chance and let the product speak for itself and knock on wood, sure. it's, it's uh, doing pretty good so far. Speaking of appreciation, thanks again Thank for you. coming appreciate out. It. Thanks Definitely. a ton, guys, for watching GunFest 2021 coverage. We're going to be bringing you more. Stay tuned.